Hi, I'm Ben Anderson from Vice's New York office. Our friends at the Vice Australia office found a company that sells products that help people end their own lives. This is Death in a Can. I can run through how you, how you actually use it if you like, yes, the whole please. process. All right. The way the process works, connect the regulator and then with the plastic bag you put the hose that connects that to the bag inside the bag and stick it to the inside of the bag. You put the bag on your head first of all and let it fill up by switching it on. It'll fill up, it's full of nitrogen, no oxygen. Then you breathe out totally, get rid of every bit of gas in your lungs best you can, hold your breath a minute, pull this down and take the biggest breath you can and you're swapping the gas in your, in your lungs from air to nitrogen, within fractions of a second you faint, you faint straight away. Then you just, in a fainted state, continue to breathe quite easily, the bag just expands and contracts and the gas is flowing into the bag, but you're in a 0% environment and you'll die in about three or four minutes after that. MaxDog is a company we set up. It's really as a way, a way to facilitate the distribution of these uh, nitrogen cylinders which can be used for brewing, which is why we call ourselves Max Dog Brewing. But of course, the main use for these cylinders are from people, by people who want to have access to a peaceful and reliable death at the time of their choosing. Hello, I'm Betty from Exit. In my last piece of film, I showed you how balloon time gas could be used to provide a peaceful death. This time, I want to show you a new system that's now available one that has several advantages over the previous method. The movement of nitrogen as a, as a gas to dispense uh, beer with has become more and more of an issue over the last few years. I go to, a, I've been to a number of beer festivals around the world where they have nitrogen nights. We got this idea that instead of using uh, one of the traditional means for peaceful death was to use a gas, and the, traditionally people were using helium, why not use nitrogen? And so that's what we started to do. So we set up a company to make sure that people have access to nitrogen. It's very peaceful and it's totally legal. And it has one other unique phenomena, one other unique characteristic, and that is that it's totally undetectable. I've seen a, several autopsy reports and they've all come back uh, cause un, un, undetermined, inconclusive is how they describe it. Well, you've got to ask yourself a question. How does it do that? If I'm in a room by myself and I've decided to use this Max Dog Brewing I have, uh, to kill myself and I have a quick quick um, a glass of IPA and then I uh, put the hood on and get on with it, um, somebody's going to find my body sooner or later with, a, with um, paraphernalia on my head and an empty cylinder next to me uh, and it's quite clear then what happened. So what we're talking about really is where someone actually removes the evidence, the gas bottle and other stuff after the event. For the sake of affecting this undetectable death we've involved not one person but at least two and that, that's in fact why I reported it. Um, to the medical board because I thought, well, you know, it seems to me to be quite irresponsible to do that. Yes, I'm uh, 63 years old. I've got uh, chronic lymphocytic leukaemia and I'm in the last stages of that disease and I've also got breast cancer. Well, I'm very sad, but um, naturally I'm very um, anxious about the end and um, would like to have total control over uh, the end of my life. I'd like to die at home, I'd like to die with my family uh, supporting me and I'd like to be able to say goodbye to them but unfortunately that's not possible because of the way the law is. They could be under suspicion for assisting me to suicide so unfortunately I'm going to have to not include my family in my death and that makes me very bitter. A suicide is not a crime but anyone who might attempt or might help you end your life that's assist you, advise or counsel you, can suffer serious criminal sanction. In fact, two states of Australia still have a possible penalty of life imprisonment for assisting someone to take that legal step of ending their life. And this is an anomaly. There's no other example in law where assisting someone to do something which is legal attracts any penalty, leave alone a penalty of such savagery. If I came along and gave you the drugs and said, here, if you take these drugs, you will die, that would be assisting. Giving people Max Dog nitrogen is saying you can use this and go home and brew yourself some beer if you want to, or you can use it if you want to, to end your life, takes it right on the edge because what we're saying is that this can be used in that way, but it can be used in other ways. And because we're not telling people to do this, it is effectively our defence.
no one can tell you how long you've got, but I know that I won't live for, for much longer. If I'm lucky enough to be home, I'll have probably a nice meal. I'll probably have a drink of some Bailey's Irish cream and I'll settle myself into my favourite chair with my cats and uh, I'll peacefully go to sleep. I think sometimes I do get painted as a bit of an ogre in the suggestion that I want people to live on indefinitely and you know at all costs and regardless of the pain, it's just not the case. And certainly that's not the case in palliative services. Palliative care is defined by, uh, by two elements. One is, is reducing and relieving pain and one is to neither prolong nor shorten life. So we, we're talking about a natural situation. And with good care, people get good advice as well. So they get to weigh their choices. You know, maybe they do want another round of chemotherapy because of X, Y, Z, or maybe that's enough. So it's, it's not as if you know, getting that kind of support is the end of choice. It's not, it's actually an opening up of choice. Knowing you've got something in the cupboard that will give you a peaceful, reliable death is immensely sustaining in the context of serious illness. People, and we know a number of them, that wake up every day with their serious cancer and say, you know, it's dreadful, but if it gets too bad, then I've just got to go to the cupboard, get out my nitrogen cylinder, and I can have a peaceful death. And what that does, having that knowledge, having that ability, is that it gives them the courage to keep on. And I think it's entirely consistent with uh, harm minimisation as a good uh, medical principle. Look, I'm not afraid of dying, but I am, a, I am afraid of being forced to endure suffering and, and in the indignity of being, of being totally dependent on other people while I'm dying. And for that reason, I think it's my, should be my choice to actually say enough's enough and I want out. Simple as that, it's just a choice. You can buy these cylinders. We've been selling them all over Australia. Increasingly, we're selling them around the world. Once you've got them, you keep them forever, infinite shelf life. It's not a prohibited substance. Provided you're comfortable with the process, it will work well.